Good evening, everyone. I'm Christy Casciato. I'm Jeff Kulikowski. Happening now, people are logged into the state DOT's YouTube page for the second formal hearing of the day, also virtual, about the future of I-81. To speak during the hearing and put comments on the record, people just had to register to join by Zoom. Then after introductory remarks from project managers, they answer questions tomorrow to in-person hearings held at the Beyond Center, 4 and 6 o'clock. Leading tonight in tomorrow's presentation is I-81 project manager Mark Frechette, who studied the pros and cons of every option for a decade. He's been there a long time. Before meeting with the community tonight, Frechette took News Channel 9's Andrew Donovan for a ride to show drivers what life will be like without the I-81 viaduct. Our drive with project manager Mark Frechette doesn't even begin on I-81. We start on 690, heading east to DeWitt, where new on and off ramps will let traffic exit at Krause and Irving Avenues. They'll be able to get off right here at 690 to, to head up to University Hill. And it doesn't matter where they're coming from. He admits understanding the community grid is hard because it requires people envision traffic routes that don't exist. But, he argues, drivers will have so many options, traffic won't gridlock. Continuing east on 690, we approach 481, soon to be renamed 81. We are adding lanes to 481. Capacity-wise, there's a lot of frustration on there. So it not only includes the Linden Corners work, but we'll read time signals. We'll make that flow differently um, and, and really improve for those who live in Manlius Fayetteville to be able to move through there and to get to the new 81 quicker and more efficiently. An element not included in the 2019 draft, but added in the 2021 edition. People who don't feel listened to, it seems to me that that's a way the DOT was listening. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that we'll never get consensus on, on the project. Uh, we don't expect to get 100% consensus, but DOT has listened all along. Possible negative impacts on suburban towns like DeWitt and Salina have triggered the most controversy. Frechette says the biggest misconception is that removing the viaduct will hurt them economically. The majority of traffic on I-81 in downtown Syracuse is destined for Syracuse. Either they work there or they're going to Destiny or... So we've been sympathetic to not changing that and providing the high-speed access into the city and, and out of the city. While Interstate 81 will be rerouted around the city, much of old 81 will stay 65 miles per hour. Only 1.2 miles between the traffic circle and MLK to near 690 will have slower speeds. When somebody asks you to describe your job, are you a traffic engineer? Are you an economic developer? Are you a politician? What are you? Because it feels like this project hits all of it. Yeah, I would say none of those three. Um, we have uh, some of the best traffic engineers on, on the project. He just has to convince the critics. Driving through Syracuse, Andrew Donovan, News Channel 9.